Now, if I was talking about any other knife, I would probably be doing something very stereotypical. Maybe feather sticking, fire starting, or batoning. But today, we're going to be looking at, two years later, on the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. Okay guys, this is a very special knife to me, and I'm going to be doing a two years later, as it's been two years since I've had a battle lore, or since I first got my battle lore, and I'm going to be taking a look back at what makes this knife so amazing and special. Now, I could go on and on about how well it strikes a ferro rod, how well it curls wood for feather sticking, how competent and capable it is at batoning. I could talk about how this blade digs into wood, how it's very comfortable to hold for hours. I could talk about many different subtopics on this knife, but the reason why I chose to just make a handful of notches for you guys is because the way that I see this knife, or how I see this knife in the way that it stands out to me, is it's in its superior and almost untouchable level of crafting. Now, sadly, in bush crafting, even though craft is the second word, crafting has kind of taken a back seat to the more typical and traditional survival practices such as firecraft and wilderness self-reliance in the means of hunting and gathering food and different things like that. And those are important parts of bushcrafting. But if we get back to the core of it, we also can't deny building things such as shelters or even larger projects like elevated kitchens or other things like rope ladders. These are crafts that are a part of bushcraft and crafting is a quintessential role and being competent at crafting is a quintessential role at being a good bush crafter. No surprises there. However, like I said, due to the fact that this has been often overlooked, the value of a knife that's good at crafting has been largely overlooked itself. Now, while I won't say things like the SRK by Cold Steel are bad knives, they certainly cannot hold a torch to the battle lore when it comes to making fine crafts, when it comes to notching, when it comes to carving wood in very detailed ways. As my rudimentary tri-stick goes to show, though I've done much more in-depth and detailed carving with this knife, this knife possesses a capability that, due to its ergonomics, the blade shape, the blade length, and the blade profile, make it exceptionally fine at doing just that. That is why I love this knife, and why, though I did sell my first one, I ended up getting a second one. Because these knives are simply so good, you really can't. If you really want to practice bushcraft in the crafting capacity, you really owe it to yourself to look into a battle lore. And that is because this knife is derived from a very amazing knife by Ray Mears. So, while this is not a bush lore in and of itself, it may be even better, if not every bit as good. It is, it does for the most part look the part of a traditional lore, or bush lore, that's how it got its name, battle lore, is because it was designed after a bush lore design, or was designed after the bush lore in overall size, in design, and ergonomics, and I think that this knife, for price and attainability level, is even better than the bush lore, because now that Ray Mears has essentially talked up the bush lore, it is an extremely expensive, extremely hard to come by knife, for the most part. So, the battle lore. Like I said, it does an amazing job at just about any and every bushcrafting task, whether you do want to practice the more survival-esque roles, such as hunting and dressing game animals, this will do it. I've done, sadly, I can't show too much of it because of YouTube's goofy ways, but I've dressed out ducks, I've dressed out fish, I've dressed out mammals with the battle lore. It does it all very well. I've dressed out, or so I've processed game animals with it. I've of course done batoning very much, feather sticking a lot, and of course fire, fire lighting 
too. This knife will do all of those things very well. However, if you really are looking or trying to find a overall camp knife that excels, it really does an extremely well or extremely good job at crafting and making very fine notches or very fine crafts, such as complementing uh, a crook knife or a hook knife when it comes to making a spoon or other fine crafts such as those, look no further than the Battle Lore, because this knife has the capabilities to cut at really good, due to this very thin tip or this very small tip, it has the ability to cut at very fine, very acute radiuses that many other bushcrafting and survival knives simply can't compete with. Also, this true uh, Scandi grind does a very good job of biting into wood and peeling back just as many layers of the wood as you need, but never too many. Because of how controllable the ergonomics make this knife, it is an extremely controllable knife in hand, and while it doesn't look like it through a video or through a picture, when you pick up this knife, it feels more like an extension of your body than it does an actual knife because of the way it's crafted. Like I said, it is rather deceptive. Looking at it, it looks rather bland and not really that impressive. But the ergonomics designed into this knife, trust me, are there. And yes, they, this thing really does feel natural in the hand. Okay, guys, God bless, and I'm out.